This episode is brought to you by Experian. Are you paying for subscriptions you don't use, but can't find the time or energy to cancel them? Experian could cancel unwanted subscriptions for you, saving you an average of $270 per year and plenty of time. Download the Experian app. Results will vary. Not all subscriptions are eligible. Savings are not guaranteed. Paid membership with connected payment account required. This is the Mutual Audio Network. The following audio drama is rated PG-13, suggesting that all children under the age of 13 should listen accompanied with an adult. <laughs> All right. So, uh, welcome to the next panel uh, here at MadCon 2022. Um, we're going to be talking about the future of diegetic podcasts. Now, before we dive into that, I have the annoying professor instinct, and it will be with me for the rest of my life. Dante, what's diegetic mean? Uh, diegetic uh, deals with whether the sound exists inside of the reality of the scene or is just put in afterwards. When I was a TA, I had to Nicely teach about answered. diegesis. <laughs> All right. I picked on the right student. Very good. Um, and Dante, why don't you go ahead and tell us who you are? Who are you, Dante? Uh, I'm, I'm, I'm a guy who does <laughs> stuff. No, uh, I'm Dante. I just graduated uh, with my master's degree uh, in television screenwriting and production. Um, and I have an obscenely specific undergrad degree, um, because I went to the same school that Jim Henson, the Muppet guy went to, and he made it so you can do whatever you want. Uh, I, <laughs> I am a, a horror writer by trade, as well as a voice actor. Um, uh, I do special effects makeup and costuming as well. That's, that's my bag. Hi, hell yeah, We're, we can get along great, Dante. I also did special effects makeup for a hot second in undergrad when I was a, a, th- a musical theater major, and then I did an abrupt shift into law. Um, yep. It'll do that. <laughs> yeah, it will. I did the other way around. I did that all through undergrad. It's a and weird connection between those two, but it's there. Yeah. Now I, I do um, settlement <laughs> coordination for a law firm. That was yeah. my nine to five. Yeah, that'll do it. Yep. That does the trick. It's a, I've, I've excited people from like, you're just like Felix, right? And be like, you'd be, I'm not, it's not a, an unusual thing, but also shut up. <laughs> like, <laughs> you, don't, you don't need to throw me under the bus that hard. All right. So diegetic, um, we're talking about um, the future of diegetic podcasts. So when we talk about diegetic podcasts. We're talking about stuff like, um, like Jack of All Trades is a found footage podcast. Uh, and found footage is one of the classic forms of diegetic media, right? Where everything that you have, you are listening to is something that has been found and either archived or as you you the listener are going through it after the fact um it often is a a a device for horror in particular um especially because you know whatever has happened has already happened there is no communicating with the protagonist anymore there is it's already you have an an innate sense of this having happened uh, before you got there um but what other kinds of diegetic podcasts or diegetic media are there? Like, are, aside from the found footage and like the Blair Witch Project vibes, what else mm. could we, we could we classify as diegetic? Dante, a pistolary <laughs> stuff falls falls under yes, this. Yes, um, I feel like it's way more common with like novels and stuff. Mm-hmm. Yeah, but like you get you get your. Uh, Frankenstein is all epistolary. Uh, Dracula mm-hmm. is the first found footage, but it's also technically epistolary because it is. It's you know it's compiled. compiled by the person who public whatever. Mina, can you say the beginning of what is a, a, a epistolary? Is basically like a compiled thing. Usually, it's done with letter. Like that's the best example of like compiling okay. a book of letters sent between two people. Letters or articles sometimes are messed yeah. In. Yeah, it's basically like written documentation from a from a time that's like put into a narrative. And usually okay. it's a back and forth, but I don't think that's part of the actual definition. I think that's just kind of... You can just have it be one person sending yeah. letters. That is an option. Yeah. Um, I think and most- so that exists a lot. And I've seen that done nicely with like straight up and down the that's what the green brothers have been doing for years and years like dear <laughs> hank and dear john that's just a, a pistolary youtube videos like mm-hmm. absolutely so would you, would you say that's diegetic then <laughs> yeah, yeah i think 
I think Hank Green actually exists in the world. Yeah, I don't, I don't know. I'll, be, I'll believe it when I see it. Yeah. I was just about to say that exact <laughs> phrase. <laughs> we hang out too much, I think. Um, <laughs> so what were you going to say, Kai? Uh, I was going to say, like, I mean, it's it's such a easy one to go to, but like, welcome to Night Vale. Like, you are yeah. a citizen listening to the radio show in this place. You are a citizen of Night Vale. Um, and so you're just, like, sat there. This, they're speaking to you kind of thing. Um, yeah. Yeah. Would you say, no, I had a question for you, Kai, because I was thinking about this after the fact, um, because I originally was like, oh, Tata Being is an obvious example here of dynamic. Is it? Or is there stuff that us, the listener, gets to be privy to, like the vibe and tonal shifts? Um, Because you add a lot of, like, impact sound that I don't know would be... Yeah. Um, but it's the future. I don't know. Maybe there is vibe music. Like, I, it's... it's... <laughs> the, the, the narration, I think, is like a is like a thing of, like, this yeah. is not somebody speaking to anyone. This is just the internal thoughts of a character. Yeah. Um, and there is definitely, like, score that, uh, like, the first bits of score I did was, like, yeah, no, only you're hearing this. This isn't a thing that they're hearing. Yeah. It's just kind of... But, like, score in the fact that, in the way that I do music, so, like, arguably music, everything's music anyway, <laughs> but, but, like, what... What, what, what's the layman we call music? a really bad sign when your band goes, I mean, really everything's music. And you're like, hmm, 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 hmm. Man, uh, this $15 I spent is going to backfire yeah. hard. Um, <laughs> luckily, all my music's free. Uh, but then uh, they, um, then there is, like, in the like last episode and then the episode before that, there is, like, sounds that are kind yeah. of up in the air as to whether it's diegetic or not, whether are they hearing this? Because it is they're in a weird fucking space that like is yeah. between reality. It's like maybe this is happening. It's just an unexplained phenomena off in the distance. Because I like will slap a reverb on some bit of no input that I've done and suddenly it's like, is that happening or is that just an effect? Which I think mm-hmm. I had a lot of fun messing with. Um so maybe is the answer. <laughs> I don't know. I think, you know, that's the perfect possible yeah. answer for chain of being is, is it? <laughs> because my, my follow-up to that was because my because at first I was like, it's a perfect example. Then I was like, oh, but is it though? And then I was thinking, yeah. okay, but if it's sound as occurring, not necessarily in the space, but to Adam, I think you can mm. make that argument that like as Adam is acknowledging the world around him, like he definitely has input, sensory input that nobody else seems to be getting. And um, you have diegetic that is with narration or does diegetic have to be like this is okay. uh yeah. it does have to exist in the world okay then so no. think, uh it no, has no, to no. exist in the world but there's like kind of like stipulations on that depending mm-hmm. on the media so like okay. i'm gonna use my favorite example of this yes which is the great gatsby so yeah. when we're discussing the novel in theory nick's like narration is and like technically this isn't like a real example of diegetic because it's just it's written as a plain novel it's not written as whatever but if you read it as his account or his inner thoughts that is literally happening and it's his perspective and it exists and it's there but then if you watch the 2012 Baz Luhrmann version which Mm -hmm. I really really enjoy that narration is no longer diegetic because it is put over top of scenes that it's not actually in sure Mm. so it's like one of those like weird twisty things where like if you want to count the great gatsby as not just like prose text if you want it to be nick writing because he is a writer he says at the very beginning that he's yeah. a writer and it's a whole thing the, the great however you want to say what great means you know then it is literally it exists it's him writing it it's mina's diary yeah. it's walton's letters um but movie is not or like in if you look at in the 2022 batman there's Radiohead playing, and then he turns his radio down. That's one of my favorite yeah. tropes in modern media is like a, a way to transition into the um, the scene itself. It's so cheesy, and every single time I'm like, oh, they did the thing! Uh, <laughs> my, favorite, my favorite yeah. is the reverse. Uh, one, of my yeah. favorite, one of my favorite movies is Repo the Genetic Opera, and... Okay, so it's a rock opera, right? So it's a it's a musical. You have many to things. Of, it's many things. You have you have to kind of assume that, like, okay, musical rules, whatever. But then there's this one shot where they're in a limousine and it pulls out to the outside, and you just hear from the inside muffled. Oh. So like, it now establishes that they're actually singing <laughs> through this whole thing. Yeah. Because you hear Roti's voice like muffled, and that. Mm. Ch- Everything. Musicals fuck me up like that. 
I, I, I think that's why I can't fully get into them because it's like, are they actually doing this? Or is this like, what is this representing? Is this, is, this a re <laughs> is this a representation of their inner like thoughts? Or is this like, they're all just actually like singing and is this is just a magical it? world? Where they do you all not sing all the time? No, we don't do that here. Mm. <laughs> this is a strictly American thing. Yeah, <laughs> no. Too much passion, you get killed. <laughs> Just like they just nudge you else are like, oh, you're not British, sorry. Yeah. Uh, you gotta go. <laughs> <That's a bite. laughs> That's okay. All right. So the the version of the media can also change. Like I like that the movie not being diegetic, but the book could, in theory, if you make the argument for it. And that's always the best sign that you've found you've hit gold is the in theory if you make an argument for it <laughs> definition. Um, okay. This way. <laughs> if you consider uh... <laughs> well actually um Just so but we're talking about the future of diegetic podcast right so what uh lee mentioned earlier in the welcoming uh that we have as a community with podcasts in particular all flocked to this like we've mm. got welcome to night vale we've got magnus archives we've got parkdale haunt we've got jack of all trades and of course i'm listing all the horror things and you might see my bias here but like this is not an unusual phenomena mm. with uh audio drama specifically whereas with books and movies and stuff it's typically the odd duck out um there's it's not as common like you finding out that like and this was the person talking to you the entire time is like a genuine twist still versus like oh yeah no mm. obviously we're reading the diary of whatever the hell um unless of course you subscribe to Dr dracula daily in which case you are currently <laughs> doing that but um why why do you think this has become such a thing with podcasts i was about not to say to... something but that's wrong but sorry go on go on <laughs> Do you want to say, go for it? Let me decide what's wrong well, with it. Well, I was going to say it's because like you're actively pressing play on an audio file. So it makes sense that you've been given the single thing, but you're also actively sitting down and watching a film of something. But whereas I think because. Okay. No, but I think that there's like, you have more so control. Much. Yeah. You could yeah. pause this. You, there, it's meant to be fussed with a bit, I guess. But, yeah. Or but can low you also do that with film? So, like, if you're sat watching a film on your computer and then you can press pause, so it's kind of like... I, I think guess audio, so. audio files are more frequently sent on their own. I feel like... No, that's... No, because then people send videos of shit to each other all the time, so I wonder... I think there's more, like... I, wait, you've hit something here. There's because a, there's, there's, there's definitely... Story. You're not supposed to pause a movie kind of a thing versus, like, if somebody sent me, like, a video of them playing with their dog, I would not feel an iota of regret pausing it to go get water or something whereas like i feel a little smidge bad even if i'm like by myself pausing a movie midway through like, an have, yeah. Scene. yeah like i feel like i've i've like not acknowledged the art in some way but you're right like somebody could send me videos of of stuff and it would be different um mm. i guess audio file lends to being more casual maybe um yeah I don't know, but that's There's something. A, something there, there is a historical component of this. Okay. Uh, so not to not to agree with the adversary and what they said during the opening earlier, my my <laughs> person, the nemesis Lee. Uh, <laughs> uh, the so one of the one of the things that has to, with with audio is I, let me back up. Part of my part of my field of study is called media necromancy, which sounds baller but is baller for a different reason uh <laughs> it's, it's basically like taking something and ripping it into a different medium so like okay. taking taking the novel war of the worlds and making it the audio drama taking the audio drama and making it the movie right and then like sure. dealing with like interactive fiction and how stuff like that mm -hmm. develops but audio is always the first thing in our homes uh, it's the most intimate form of media. So, like, not to be that guy, but like, from the beginning, we sat around the campfire. To <laughs> the store. But like, the first oh, thing no. that we put <laughs> into our homes is that whether it's mm. someone, you know, reading the letter from your cousin who's out of the country, or getting a record from someone in the war, or the radio being in your house. That's the first thing, and then it becomes oh, okay. There's stuff. movies in the cinema. Okay. Now you can have TV at home. Now this. And 
That's true. It even, it even moved with us of the first thing we could take with us was music. We start developing ways yeah. to like listen to sound, listen to audio. Okay. Audio books are a thing. And then one of the first thing we ported onto, you know, phones as they became like yeah. ubiquitous in life was being able to listen to music and being able to listen to audio. Yeah. And that went directly to podcast because it's iPod cast, right? And there's that whole lawsuit nonsense about it. And so there's a specific type of intimacy that comes with like in the home, in the hand, like this is, this lives here. Mm -hmm. That it's, It would yeah. be a little weird if it was just like, I, through my phone that I am listening to, I can hear an entire world versus through my phone that I have, I can hear my friends talking or I can hear, yeah. you know, a, a song that, you know, someone sat down and recorded like music. We know sure. someone sat down, recorded, produced it, put it out and we can get to it. If it's, like the way television works is we're just seeing a snapshot. And yeah. so there's like a weird sort of like, we have a difficulty buying into it because it's intimate and it's in our homes and it's with us. And it's like a, okay. yeah. So our suspension of disbelief is going to be of a much higher standard. Uh, like we're, we're less willing to excuse that um, and need to be a little bit more convinced. That is actually kind of the route that I was going to go when we, like, I had to stop myself from, from diving into my feelings on why uh, indie creators tend to lean towards that. Um, but my, my first instinct was we're critics. We're critics of art. We have been consumers of art, and we're like, this is very much indie produced. So this is not based off of big budget stuff that we think will be most mass pleasing. This is the, our, the target audience is us. Um, and as a result, we make the media that we think would be the most believable. And if we tend to be harsh critics of ourselves, diegetic leans well towards like, no, it's not, we're not asking you to suspend your disbelief at all. Actually, yeah, you don't have to suspend a goddamn thing. We will come to you. <laughs> I mean, that is in, it's like a defense mechanism. Like, well, if Almost, it's, it's, yeah. it's, a, it's a real thing. So like, what do you, you know, is that like, as in, so the quality of like the, well, yeah, is that? I think so. Yeah, no, I think that's, yeah. I think I hear what you're saying. And like, because we're going to have a much higher standard for what we are willing to believe out of sure. the stories that we produce. Um, and okay. like, yeah. I mean, like, it's like when you were telling me forever ago about like how much thought goes into the sound effects in the background of chain of being scenes and you you have to like stop yourself and be like i spent like a week on <laughs> this like sneeze that no it's one is going to notice you of someone like hammering a nail into a wall it's like <laughs> yeah. yeah everyone really cares about that fucking guy putting a picture <laughs> on his wall yeah nice one guy. that's why the episode is two weeks late because there's fucking hammer noise isn't it <laughs> yeah, but i thought it was a good fucking hammer noise yeah. it was <laughs> very good um, but like that's what i mean like so in because when you listen to your own media later you're gonna hold yeah. it to that standard whereas if you listen to, if i sent you like yeah i recorded this podcast it'd be really weird if you're like you have aq of the hammer guy in the background <laughs> kind of shit actually um yeah. and i can no longer believe your story <laughs> so is it, is it bad i kind of want someone to put that level of critique into it though or is that like oh. a weird is that just I, weird? I'm i want you to make that. a i want you to make a super cut of just all the background noises you think yeah, no right. one hears and just upload it with no comments yeah. say, like exact same show notes whatever just <laughs> chain of being minus the chain yeah. <laughs> just being <laughs> <laughs> um, but that that was my theory is that we were a harsh critic and because we don't have any um mm. studios or producers to, like <laughs> beating that out of us and saying i don't care produce it i think um, in that same thanks. vein like quality and ability is part of it yes. as well I in know. that like if you look at uh for example uh, magnus archives or like the web series carmilla mm -hmm. they're both they're both very cognizant of like what on their budgets and abilities they can actually like quote unquote show or like yeah. sound yeah and so like part of the reason it was on the tapes in the beginning in magnus archives was just because it was audio quality it's you put that filter on and it's fine carmilla you don't have any of the action scenes right in front of you because they can't shoot can't them right so yeah. they just they set it up as this real dead to camera thing and so when you make it like you literally have to be able to record it you kind of save yourself a little bit when it you comes do. to certain things and are able to like drift also into that like narration realm. So I, I also write for the gray rooms 
um, I had written like an anthology episode for them and I'm helping write season five. Yay, everyone get hype. Um, and one of their things that they really like is just, you know, because it's first person. So they yeah. let someone get into these really like descriptive, like horror monologues that you wouldn't get like if you just did all the sounds for it it would just be a lot of slurping versus like you know you can get really into the, like the na- nave to chops viscera it's just the sound of me with a slurpee after seven eleven actually i'm sorry guys I'm exactly yeah and so it, it gives you the it gives you this ability to sort of like exactly how like a, a a novel do an interpretive filter of like you're not just experiencing something that scares you you're experiencing somebody else's fear as yeah well. and it's it's that thing of yeah. like i know some people talk about horror novels don't get to them because they're the one reading it it's mm-hmm. right that bridge which first of all bullshit fuck you it, you're bad at reading <laughs> i'll read rebecca and come back yeah and tell me, tell me what you feel. <laughs> K- K- caitlin r kiernan would like a word uh but like with the <laughs> podcast it's very much like just one word. That's all, hey, all she needs. Hey, let me let me show you something real fucked up, baby girl. Like it's just, <laughs> hey, kid. You know you no, can't stop yeah. imagining. Right. You're not reading it. I'm telling you about it. Right. My skin this is, is this off. Happening to you. The yeah. adversary. <laughs> Hi, Lee. This is bullshit. <laughs> um. That's actually a very good point. And like uh, when, so Jackie and I, way before FN existed, um, well, I guess not way before, it kind of all snowballed, but um, we decided to make a podcast <laughs> and we decided to do this for funsies. And we thought this will be a great hobby that we can share together as, as buds, uh, new friends that we met at work. We didn't think this was going to be a big deal. <laughs> anyway, <laughs> and um, it's, it's turned out all right, I think. Um, <laughs> So we decided to make this uh, podcast and it was, and I've told the story a few times before. So if you've heard it before <laughs> uh, from listening to multiple uh, FN events, I'm sorry, you're going to hear it again. Um, Jack of all trades was made based off of a joke of me not understanding the Magnus archives. So I have, there's something like chemically wrong with me that like my fear reaction is delayed enough that like it no longer has the intensity of like a flinch reaction. Um, Phenomenal for leadership positions and shit because I'm unflappable, possibly to a worrisome extent. (laughs) But Mm -hmm. like, uh, it means that like when the fear does settle and it's more of a slow creeping like terror rather than an immediate sense of horror. and that's one of the big reasons that I, it, it took me forever to understand horror as a, as a medium because I wouldn't wait. I would sit through there and people would be like, wasn't that terrifying? I'd be like, not really, because for me it was delayed. And I wouldn't take the time to let it like sink in or evaluate the tropes of it or what that meant in a narrative. And Jackie was the first person to introduce me to that. And she's like, okay, actually one of the best pieces of media that you can really begin with, especially if you're coming in with a modern perspective, um, and you know you don't have the nostalgia aspect here to back you up on anything would be the Magnus archives because it literally dives into what is fear why is this scary to you why is this not scary to someone somebody else um and it will eventually hit something that you are scared by um and which but it, it meant that um Jackie who knows me very very well knows that I will um immediately go find transcripts and then read the whole thing and I will like I read much faster than I listen and so I will just inhale that stuff and, and uh, i do this with video games do this with like I, I will read the wikipedia for a book because i thought like oh i needed to look up the name of something but while i'm here <laughs> and like and the spoilers don't bother me to be clear and I, i'm one spoilers of those people real. that spoilers they're not real. real uh there are some instances like outer worlds don't look it up because it's genuinely a better experience but it won't ruin it it's just it makes it better to explore it but i I've, I've i've maybe two or three examples of media and that that I genuinely believe that that is like part of it. Whereas like, if it's just a surprise or a twist in the end, I don't think that that's ruined necessarily. I always um, find I, myself anticipating it. I find it more exciting. Yeah, like, there's, a, there's a study oh, about this. Little stuff too. Well, there's a study about this. Let me pull the, let me pull the article real quick so I can actually talk Please about do. it. But so, so Jackie was introducing me to horror through the Magnus archives. Right. And, um, and we've been kind of talking about writing a podcast together just for funsies. Um, and, there's an episode in the Magnus archives called the lost Jones cave that so many people are terrified of. And understandably, uh, underwater cave diving is horrifying. Is the concept <laughs> and like, why? <laughs> why? You guys ever gone caving? No, I'm saying I don't do that. <laughs> I, I, went caving oh, in West Virginia. Yeah. I went caving in West Virginia one time. And first of all, it was wonderful. 
What's uh, it? I feel it. like that's a trauma bonding thing people say. Okay, when we it, again, again, caving, not cave diving. Caving. Okay, okay all right. So all right, a, little right, I mean, a little bit better, a little bit better. A little more <laughs> bones, a little less water. It was yeah. wonderful. Um, <laughs> but it, it, it got me prepped for Lost John Cavern in that yeah. I filled up my yeah, bathtub with water. I got a washcloth soaked in water. I put it over my face and I laid like that and listened to it. It was great because I don't, I also don't get freaked out by myself. I'm like, I will give myself the best shot. <laughs> I want to experience it. <laughs> I want to experience it. Yeah. And like, and so she made me promise to not look up transcripts, right? Um, so that's that's a crucial element there. Um, and I also <laughs> uh, I struggle with auditory processing because I'm super ADHD. And so what she said is whenever you get confused about something, just message me and I'll clarify it for you. Um, and she responded super fast, so that was never a problem. Um, so. <laughs> <laughs> listening to Lost John's Cave um, with my husband and I have it between us like we actually have like a two desk set up here we're side by side um, and, and uh, I had it set like the, the speakers between us so that we could uh, experience the sound of, sound sound of it as best we could um, I had to point a little bit more towards him though because he gets more out of that I think um, and I was listening and I was listening and I was like oh, this is really interesting this is fascinating up until um, the person or the letter being read, because I think it's a one where Jonathan reads it, uh, talks about the audio that they recovered from the cave um, that she has no memory of and is very creepy. And um, what I heard was, don't drop the beat, don't drop the beat, don't drop, which is not what she's saying. She's saying, take her, not me. So if anybody out there was as confused as I was, now you know. Um, and I was talking to Jackie about this episode because I had heard it perfectly clear. Like, I didn't think this was something that I'd misunderstood. I thought this was like, this is just another instance of Amy doesn't understand horror. Okay. And so I was like, so what? Why is rhythm relevant then? Like, why is this? I'm trying to find like the, like the narrative purpose to all of this or why we care that there's a beat at all to be dropped. And I'm like thinking of this as like a high academic level. And I'm like, okay, well, obviously it's got to be something up there because it's not going to be uh, Mr. Johnny Sims. You wouldn't lead me astray like this, would you? And like, um, <laughs> and Jackie's like, what are you talking about? And I was like, don't drop the beat. She's like, that clarifies nothing. What are you talking about? And I was like, don't like, she says it over and over. Like, take her, not me. Why would you ever accept that don't drop the beat? And she's like, wow, you really don't grasp horror, do you? <laughs> so Jack of All Trades was born of what if we had a protagonist in a horror series that was of that level of not getting horror, just didn't get it. And so it was diegetic because we wanted to have mm. the like the audience aware of there's nothing I can do to stop this train wreck from happening while Jack is in the middle of it going and I believe in my friends and I believe <laughs> that my girlfriend loves me and everything about this job is going to go awesome and I think I'm in a rom-com is what I think and like <laughs> and that was so it was a a, a combination of horror and comedy so because I came from a comedy background um and have only recently to face first into horror um but like yeah, it's that that was the whole purpose of the di diegetic uh, framing was that we as the audience got to go, oh, no. Oh, Jack, no. Oh, honey, no. And <laughs> um, that that made it so much more visceral, I think, to be able to experience what she experiences with her without any extra information and still now like, oh, she's just kind of dumb. OK, <laughs> so that was the joke that started Jack of all trades. And I'm sorry for telling that story a million times. But the purpose of that being the diegetic media has a framing context that adds something to a narrative even by the omission of stuff that you otherwise would have in a narrative um where i was going with that is what does omission do in narratives what is that what is the impact of that in stories um, when we have um, a mission uh okay. like we don't have the the extensive description of the slurping sounds right so what is the omission impact then i so i personally there, I feel like there's a couple of answers to this and like the, the right up front one is like it gives the listener room to do whatever right and that's where fan fiction and speculation and whatever come in yeah. but I, I, I do think a very important part of media is that it is consumed and consummation is not like a harmless process and so when you hi I, I am a horror writer <laughs> <laughs> 
why you're a hard writer. That's you have to destroy writer. what you like. No, but like in order, in order to like receive a story or receive yeah. any input, it has to be parsed through so many like layers that like it's impossible not to put something on it. And when every single rung of that ladder is filled in, you end up like bumping up against it. And like yeah. obviously, like media criticism shouldn't exist in that way where like the second you disagree with something it's no longer good at star wars fans but like uh <laughs> hi the thing that makes you a star wars fan is liking star wars not hating all the movies my guys but like <laughs> when when you leave rungs off of the ladder purposefully or like leave stuff yeah. omitted you leave nice spaces for your you to slot yourself into and mm -hmm. either you know fill something in for yourself or understand it more or play with it more or even just like you know even if you don't do anything with that space you fall into it and you're trapped there like sorry but you are now stuck yeah you, this is uh, this is where you live now whoops yeah. <laughs> now you're gonna think about this for about eight billion years yeah uh and I'm gonna, i'll say this because because lee is here uh we are streaming a video game called Sherlock Holmes Chapter 1, made by Frogwares. It's game of the year every year. It's incredible. It's Sherlock Holmes for people who like Dorian Gray. That's the <laughs> premise of the game. Uh, and in it, everyone is sort of very styled 1886, sort of like sure. like Mediterranean style. Like, it's very, like, Wonderful. you know, normal. Except for Sherlock Holmes, who, first of all, this is teetotaler Sherlock Holmes. He doesn't drink, he doesn't smoke, he doesn't rat his hair, nothing. He doesn't do anything, no vices. He's 21 years old. And he is dressed in black suit, leather everywhere, straps across everything. It's this, like, bonkers, like, emo, steampunk, like, baby boy's first band concert. But also, he's goth. And so we spent forever talking about this suit that he's wearing in that there is no conceivable world he bought this suit he didn't buy this there's no way he bought this suit there's no way he asked for it to be made it had to have been a hand-me-down that he wanted to change or he liked to play pretend as a kid a costume like whatever and so okay, like it's there's something here yeah there's, there's no way he like wrote a letter to mycroft being like can i have money to buy a like <laughs> goth ass like suit <laughs> He didn't do that. Absolutely. Sing yeah, it's, more. It's, I'm going to look so fucking hot. Everyone's going to like, he didn't do that. He, simply, he doesn't give a fuck. And so we spent, you know, probably more time than it takes people to complete this game. Just discussing. So why did he do this to his suit jacket? No, but legit. That's like a good question. And I, that's one of my biggest, um, I, the reasons I love costume design. Why do they dress like that? That was a very good question. Um, yeah. Why I mean, does Bucky Barnes have 45 unique straps on him? <laughs> I don't think we're ready for that answer. <laughs> 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 the, uh, the, the impact of a mission then, I guess, with Diegetic Podcasts is so much harsher because it's mm. silence, right? The lacking of information is always going to be silence. And a diegetic yeah. podcast, right? I, I mean, genuinely. Sure. <laughs> oh, <laughs> the last transmission, you know, once once this ends, once this podcast stops playing, once it, like, you whatever, this, that yeah. is it. Yeah. You're out. Yeah. 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 Silence. And I, I think that hits in a way that's different than TV, that, like, TV is a thing we turn off and on, whereas, yeah. like, hearing, hearing someone's voice, like, a podcast ending abruptly is the same as your friend, like, dropping off a phone call. Like, yeah. more worries, um, like they... something happened. Yeah, yeah. I didn't end this, this in, this like, a weird way. My control, yeah. This is not, I didn't expect this to be <laughs> the way it is, yeah. <laughs> Can you re? I think the two glasses of wine have got to me. Can you? I've lost the thread a little bit. Can you reiterate what the the what do you mean by like omission and then silence in terms of? Okay, can you just like so, explain that to me. Yeah, yeah, yeah. No, I got you. Um, so in Jack of all trades, right? Um, we are hearing the recordings from her Keystone, right? Okay. Um, yeah. for those who have not listened to Jack of all trades, why? And two, um, <laughs> we, <laughs> the Keystones are basically like a Swiss Army knife necklace thing that also act as a uh, monitoring because it's, you know, the enemy is always capitalism. Um, once she's hired, so it's for legal purposes, 
her boss says, to have recordings of all of her interactions with tenants on various Vita Cicadi's properties so that if anything were to arise, they could, of course, treat it appropriately. Um, and uh, Jack, being the trusting soul that she is, goes, oh, that's so nice that you protect me. <laughs> 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 um, <laughs> Um, so we, the listener, are listening to Keystone recordings, which are activated by, I think I said somewhere in there when I was researching, it was somewhere between 15 to 30 decibels of sound. So like breathing won't do it, but like if you cough loud enough or if you say something and it's sustained enough for like about 10 seconds, your Keystone will just start recording automatically. Um, so That's when we're... Dynamic, by the way. Thank you. I thought it was pretty clever. You um, get a super cough every fun. time Jack coughs. That's actually all of season two. It's just Jack has a really it's nasty really cold. Um, <laughs> um, but the uh, uh, yeah, so the keystone it, it is a it is a fallible object. It's it's it is an, an inanimate object, and that does have impact. The um, so what we're listening to is her experiencing it in real time. So there's not even like the um, like I guess the Blair Witch effect of like you cut it and then we're going to come back and like, or whatever, uh, like there's, or uh, God, what am I thinking of? Um, marble Hornets. Yeah. yeah I remember marble Hornets, mm -hmm. um, where like the, the video would end abruptly midway through and then it would like come to static and then it would be clearly a new clip started playing, but it was still something that they, the, they, the creator paced in a way. Okay. Um, whereas you are listening to the keystone recording, that whole recording is that whole recording. Sure. Um, yeah. And those 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 instances of sound were close enough together that that got all uh, tossed into the exact same file. Even if the keystone like went to sleep mode for a little bit, yeah. um, it was close enough that it was um, it was it was notable. Um, so, as a result, silence from Jack, silence from her environment is extra tense because there is um, five seconds before the keystone goes to sleep. Mm five seconds of, of silence or anything below 15 decibels. I can see your brain going, Dante. <laughs> but there's five seconds, which means, and we tell the listeners this at the very beginning um, for the express purpose of having them go, one, two, three, four. <laughs> like, am I gonna lose that information? Is everything that I, like my connection to Jack right now, is that about to go? Okay, um, yeah. So there are, uh, so Jack of all trades is a, a comedy horror. Um, and I will warn, we deliver on both. <laughs> Full of heavy handedly, we deliver on both. Um, and the first bit of course is comedy because everything's fine. Um, and we, we want you to, I would just want you to have a good time, laugh and smile a lot. Um, but then there are instances where Jack is trying to run and hide and stay hidden. And that omission means that we, the listener, don't know if she's successful. We don't know if she's nailed it or not. And five seconds of silence could mean a lot of things. Um, and her keystone is registered to her, which she never questions why that is a thing um, or what that means or why it seems to pick up on her sound specifically. That's odd. But Jack is like, that's what neat things we can do with technology these days. Gotta love her. Um, so that's what I mean by omission. We, okay. we stop giving you information. You no longer know if Jack is being intentionally silent or if something is forcing Jack to be silent. You don't hear the like, <sighs> somebody yeah. hiding because that would pick up. Um, so that omission I think gives us a totally different kind of information. Um, and this was something that Jackie was trying to teach me about, about horror, that omission and over information are key elements to comedy that translate really well into horror too. Um, of like to not telling you the context of something and then slamming the context home at the end really usually brings the joke home. Um, whereas with horror, you just don't bring it home. <laughs> there's no punchline. Yeah, that's the only no. difference. Yeah, there's no punchline. You just get stuck of a story with um, the first Alien film where apparently Ridley Scott yes. didn't actually want to ever show the alien at all. Mm -hmm. And it was just yeah. going to like, yeah, I think it, you only see it at the end when it gets ejected into space. Cause I like, only, yeah, fully. Mm -hmm. But like, I think it definitely would have been a lot better. Then I guess in that way, you don't have to see how horrible the thing is. Like an audio drama of Alien, you wouldn't know, you would never see it. And no. that's right. I mean, yeah, which I think maybe that's, that, that is why it's so good. Cause like- They also, 
I think what they nailed also with Alien is the thing about like the xenomorphs that is scary isn't the thing that they're visually showing you. Yeah. Um, Like it's like the whole point of Alien is that like penetration is scary. Like Mm -hmm. that's that's what it is. Mm -hmm. But when you're presented with these creatures, yes, they have every element of them screams sex at you yeah. like in like a, yeah. a in a scary way not in like a yeah. well it depends who you it depends on me or not. It may, might, you might be me and it's a cool it's a cool and i didn't realize it was horror way uh <laughs> this is a documentary that i'm watching uh, <laughs> but the thing of like you know your brain will tell you like oh big big scary monster big teeth the hard yeah. hard hard carapace you know second mouth whatever and so the thing you are seeing, yeah, yeah, uh, Tony is saying it's Geiger's whole state. Yeah. So like the thing you are seeing still isn't the thing that's hunting you. Yeah. And yeah. like that hits in like a great way of like a, and I think that's something that like uh, the movie without narration does quite well. When you have the first person yeah. take the, like the face hugger, you don't get like a statement of that guy being like this is what it felt like here's how it yeah. did so um, i have the world's worst wednesday guys yeah <laughs> he just it on and then silence yeah until it's not yeah mm-hmm. because like the only thing scarier than omission is when you come back from it and have yeah. to deal with the aftermath yeah so There's, that's a wonderful i god i wonder you know i wonder I wonder if the, one of the reasons this is so big with audio drama in particular, and this is something I harp on a lot when I'm directing scenes, is that you only get sound data. That's it. Mm. There's no, and mind you, we don't think about like, you know, touch, taste, smell or whatever when you're going to a theater, but it's there. Like yeah. this is all part of like the atmospheric build is something that is usually very intentionally done. If you have a set designer that has any merit, but like the, you, this is, this is the whole experience sensory wise for you whereas with audio drama maybe that's why we're pickier with them too of like i don't buy it yet yeah i'm just listening to this i am sat here on my couch why do i need to be scared why do i need to be laughing at this um maybe Mm. that's why it lends well to diegetic because we can omit so much easier it is so much harder to do an emission in like say live theater like we just you just stopped like <laughs> that didn't seem like a, a thing was omitted. It seemed like you fucked up. Yeah, <laughs> like, yeah. It doesn't seem like an intentional thing. Whereas with audio drama, all you have to do is stop recording, and that doesn't really sound all that different. And silence is something that can very much be intentionally placed in stories, so people aren't going to immediately go like, "Oh, is it fucked up?" And <laughs> mess up my well, computer. The, the, there's a, like a rule, like which was what we were taught in like sound for screen specifically, but I think it, it does apply that like don't don't ever like like you're not really supposed to have like total zero decibels at any point during a thing you're always supposed to do some sort of room tone even it's like Mm -hmm. you're never not hearing anything in your life ever even if you're in the fucking sensory deprivation you can hear your own heartbeat in the if you're in like water tank like you're always listening to something so i think it is that kind of like discomfort of if it actually drops to zero it's like oh that's weird that's not nice that's not good yeah (laughs) yeah but i guess but then well, here we go. This I always end up going in circles with this thing about silence because you then, if it does drop to zero decibels, you are then just hearing the sound of the world around you and the headphones and the. That's kind of a visceral reaction, right? Mm-hmm. It's, 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 it's a, a story that is pulling you and pulling you in and then slam dunking you back out. It's the, yeah. it's the drop off, too. Yeah. Like, I feel like this is something that's specific to things that are like in parts, whether it's uh, yeah. episodic or novels or whatever, is that like a movie. You, you top the bottom and however it ends that's the end of it but yeah. if you're doing a series or something that's episodic More you are just left for a second and not expected to just suddenly continue with your life there's more to go but you yeah. are now thrust back into like, yeah, it is now dead silent and you're on the subway and yeah. you're no longer on the Hephaestus and you have to, mm-hmm. you know, whatever you're, you're, you're suddenly there again and you have to pick it back up like you have mm-hmm. to make the choice to oh, do I that like, like it's make the choice to do that, that that's a that's you are very, real, like this is thing i think about a lot as a you're participating horror in it. person yeah is when it's episodic horror you are continuing to put these people in danger <laughs> if you if you stop yeah. listening if you stop watching the tv show whatever this, this is different than is. a movie you yeah. say you're, they're done they're done because they only exist as you're seeing them yeah and if you watch the next episode that's on you 
But if it's if it's diegetic, then okay. and you're listening to this thing that's already happened, it's already something happened. has happened to them, but you don't know what it is. So it's I guess is it? Yeah. Like, and don't you like feel guilty for like... not bearing witness to it? Yeah. yeah. <laughs> they died with no one to mourn them. Listen to the death rattle, coward. <laughs> There's our thesis statement for this part, for this particular. Uh, it's, it's, <laughs> we'll I was gonna say that's, that's so a monochrome heavy metal band. <laughs> yeah, listen <laughs> to the Death Rattle Coward. That's our first yeah, that's song. Our first, yeah, yeah. our first song is called "Listen to the Death Rattle Coward." <laughs> Did you do long distance heavy metal band? I'm sure. I'm I think sure you could. Might be a part of this. I know I've got like pastel going on, but I feel like it's every you group it one like, it's off, right, like, like you need the one. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Yeah, it's, it'll be fine. It's perfect. Absolutely. I'll I recently just had to record a bunch of screaming, so I'm down. Perfect. Yeah. There you go. Was, um, where were you like three months ago? <laughs> I was doing I was doing the sound design for a like a post battle scene. You know, like in medieval times, they just go around and, like shank everyone to death. Like, yeah. I was like, does anyone have any good screams? Because all the fucking free sound screams are shit. Well, You're I, horrible. I, you know, yeah. yeah, I just, I yeah, I I just recently got got uh, murdered by a, a whole demon. It'll be out soon. Oh, that's nice. Uh, at least yeah. it's a whole demon, not like you know a fifth of a demon. Like, come on, it was in my brain. It was very terrible. It was great. Yeah, awesome. I was sixteen. Yeah, it's fine. All right. So Tony's asked, are there any good examples of blending diegetic and kind of your standard oh, audio God. drama? And well, I'm gonna lob this one at Dante because I have a hunch that he has opinions about blending diegetic and anything non diegetic. But my, I'm gonna I'm gonna preempt it a, a little bit. Um, using my my mod, my mod powers here, and say um, I think the moment that you blended, it's no longer diegetic, right? I think it's one of those things where it's it's the buying in, right? Okay. I, okay. I, All right. I feel like I feel like so. I'll, I'll, I'll I will use the gray rooms as as an example sure. here. Um, the way the gray rooms works for anyone who hasn't listened to it or only listened to like early seasons, because like it, ha- it has changed significantly. When you listen to like the first couple episodes, it's like, this is tried and true, like creepy pasta. Like, you know, if that's your thing, that's your thing. If not, it's not, but like over the seasons, it like actually develops into like a quite effective uh, horror show. And the way it does, is it has frame stories and door stories. And like the door stories are the anthology things of like the whole premise is like, you look like someone is trapped in the gray rooms and has to open a door and then when they go through the door they live through someone's death experience and it's that person like it's told in first person being like this happened then this happened and you hear what's happening around them as they sort of narrate it um which is not it is non-diegetic right this is like a they're just they're telling you the story you can't hear this this isn't a real thing but the frame story that starts it because like there's a person who has to open that door there's a person right. that exists that has to be diegetic that is diegetic because it is like a facility it is like a process that there are people running the gray room like there's an architect there is a warden like things like that where like this is a place that actually exists and because it has so much infrastructure even though they never say like you know it's being recorded or it can be heard or whatever like it's understood this that like still in front of a live studio audience yeah someone <laughs> built this place someone runs this place therefore yeah. the things that happen in this place are audible and because the way Grey Rooms works is that you have your frame story and then they open the door and go into like whatever their room is, you already have bought into it. Like you're already sold yeah. into like the I'm here, I'm that. with you, and now I'm just gonna come with you. You know? And I so like, like that. I I feel like some po- I feel like podcasts could play a little bit more with like transitioning out of like starting it as like, you know audio log da, 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 and then just you know uh, i have appointments today and then you just keep going with that person throughout their day and you yeah know, they do not still have their voice recorder out but you still like you already sold it you in. don't go to like kroger and yeah. be like and these peaches i feel like are a metaphor for i'm like, not leaving <laughs> shots continuing to be fired between the adversaries <laughs> uh, <laughs> but like I, you can you can buy in and like i feel like there's there's ways <laughs> lee's booing me in chat lee, <laughs> hey hey lee post a photo of your phone case post a photo of your phone case coward what's your phone case look like that's also hey, lee, what's... release from the, <laughs> for the metal band um, boo kick him off the panel boo <laughs> <laughs> yeah that one specifically <laughs> uh what was i gonna say but so like i feel like there's it's a it's a slippery slope though of if you go back and forth and back and forth and yeah, some stuff is some not stuff isn't anymore. It's like um, mm, okay. <laughs> just, try, 
up. <laughs> How eccentric are we willing to go here? <laughs> yeah. yeah. All right. So I wonder so, then what is the like super saturation point of diegetic framing? Like where, where do we get to the point where we're like, that is enough. If we have any more addition into this, there is, this is no longer going to be believable. So I'm looking at the chat. I'm gonna close. Like, sorry, I'm yeah. putting um, posting threats on me. Um, but then, then, but then, w w where do you start to label it diegetic or not? Like, if it has a diegetic uh, recording in, is it? It's just a thing with a diegetic, diegetic recording in, or does it have to be completely 100% pure without any non-diegetic stuff in to be? Because like, you can obviously most, have scores. Most like, diegetic things are just pieces, though. You know, like when you watch right. a movie, the whole thing isn't diegetic. But if someone has a radio, the radio mm. playing music is diegetic, right? Because it's not the whole thing. Yeah. It's the and like when we get into talking about like a thing being diegetic, like the whole thing, we're talking mm. almost exclusively about audio because, hey, most diegetic things are audio, just generally speaking. Okay, there we go. Then we're kind of heading back to that. Why is this such a, a thing with podcasts? Maybe we've all just kind of recognized that audio is something that's easier for us to recognize as a visceral experience. Well, um, also, like, if you're watching a movie, the, 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 the gun isn't real. Right. right, like, it, like, right. I mean, like it's, di it's diegetic in that it you exists can, in the scene. You can still see the frame of your TV screen. You can it's, see yeah. your weird posters behind it. You can it, see it, everything. It's diegetic because it literally exists in their world, right? Like mm -hmm. it's diegetic in that sense, but it doesn't mm -hmm. impact you in the same way. So part of, well, yeah. I, I'm a big fan of uh, uh, of transmedia integration. So like this happens a lot with like ARGs and things like that. So like when yeah. something you know, a, a, a character in a show just... This this happened with Reaper the Genetic Opera. Is all the characters had MySpace accounts, right? Yeah. They all fully had MySpace accounts. And I I was working so on a web weird. series... I was so working good. on a web series for something at one point. I had to put out an episode, and I got banned from OnlyFans because of it. <laughs> Don't even worry. Not for pornography, for gore. Uh, <laughs> but so, like, it's, you know, the OnlyFans that exists in this show would be right. exactly the same to us as it is to them. We can all access these gory sure. horrible suicide photos mm -hmm. right right and so in even though the gun is diegetic the gun doesn't affect us the same way no. it does the characters but the audio does if a song is playing we are hearing the song just the same as they are that is actually an extremely good point and I, it reminds yeah. me too that we've got um we actually have an arg for jack of all trades that i, I always forget that we have, but we do. Um, we have an actual Fidus Acadie's official company Twitter account. <laughs> this is real. <laughs> this is excellent. Yeah. This is excellent. <laughs> or, 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 or live theater has like a weird bridge here it's where like mm -hmm. if a character smokes, this is like almost exclusive to scent specifically with theater or, if, you know, character yes. touch. Like if you, if you go see Cabaret <laughs> and the world the was uh, being a set designer and, and director for theater and going around and just spraying the, <laughs> the, the smoke scent. Of yeah. Yeah. Yeah, yeah this, it makes a big difference. This, the cigarette's going to impact you exactly the same way. If the Kit Kat boys from Cabaret come down and sit in your lap, they're going to affect you the same way they're affecting people on stage, right? Mm -hmm. the, the Even the orchestra is beautiful. I was in Cabaret, or like whatever. Like, mm -hmm. I literally exist. My trumpet exists for you the same way it does for the MC. Like, yeah. Yep. That bridges the gap between you and the media. I wonder if that's also why it's been a big trend to see horror, because that um, this impacts you. It's not often a friendly feeling, is it? Mm -hmm. Like when we're experiencing media, uh, the, when it reaches out and grabs you in a way that you are no longer in control of how it impacts your world, that is not often received as a friendly gesture. <laughs> It's very much a, hey, no, 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 you can go right back into the TV box, sir. I don't need you in my living room. Get out of here, Samara. <laughs> yes, <laughs> Samara, uh, look at you. I've been doing our yoga, I see. But there's there's an element of intrusiveness to it that I think lends well to. So I wonder then if diegetic um, audio dramas are kind of like the ultimate diegetic fiction experience and in the the way that we are capable of creating it right because sound sound is sound is sound right we can if we're hearing what the characters are hearing there is no barrier between us and the character and if that is the only information we have 
then that's the, that is the truest possible relay of information. Um, it, it changes dramatically on how you're receiving it too. Like yeah, thing it is. Like if you're Night Vale, you are listening to the radio, like Kai said. You know, yeah. Bacos Industries, you are a shareholder receiving the, you know, uh, up, updates, whatever it happens to be. Yeah. You know, versus Wolf 359 is less of like a intrusive, scary spookum where it's like, it is fully canonical that it's recorded. It's, you know, the sound is diegetic, right? This is actually happening. They're on a ship, but it's not the same, like, put into your hands. Yeah. Sort of thing. Yeah. That is true. That is do true. You, do you find then that there is like a quality barrier for you where if because it's meant to be this kind of this is exactly what you're hearing and it's is if the sound design isn't like quote unquote good enough, do you find that that can then make a non or make a sorry make a digestic thing not as good for you because it's like well that's not what it sounds like. Do you know what I mean? Like do you, how yeah, far yeah, do you yeah. have to make it sound in like a punch? Does, does can you do like a? <laughs> we have like. <laughs> Yeah, yeah, we have Jack mean. jump and it's a boing. Like, yeah. Like, can you do that sort of, does it have to be? You have to be realistic. You can't do like the tricks that you do in normal sound design. A punch has to just be. It just has to sound like you'll be. That you know what I mean? It's a very good question. And then you have this really high standard for sound design of like. Well, you, I mean, you have to take it all the way and be fucking like kind of. neural shit and like. So like you know. a punch sounds really anticlimactic. Um, mm. For those who haven't been punched or thrown punched, I can I can I can or tell you. Snap even like. It's yeah. so boring to hear. It is so, Slap, it does, it's slapping sounds great. Slapping sounds yeah. fantastic. Yes, yeah, slapping sounds amazing. But but punches, nothing. Um, mm. It just sounds vaguely damp. It's horrible. <laughs> but um, it, it's it's all just a little too squishy. But um, the punch effect that we give in mm. audio, if we gave the actual sound of a punch, no one would buy it. No one would buy that that was a punch. You'd be like, why did you yeah. just hit that dude with a fish? Like, well, that's a very bizarre thing that you've just done. That doesn't intimidate yeah. me at all. Versus, like, the sound effects that we create for punching create, um, a, it's entirely fake. No punch in the world sounds like that. No punch has ever sounded like that. But oh we, God. as people, will yeah. immediately hear that and go, that was a punch. There's also, with audio, because we're already in the mindset of, like, it's just voices, mostly yeah. we also are set up for like even if it is just the like sound mm -hmm. you then have the uh, afterwards like yeah, that's true. you're you are way more forgiving of someone making like pain sound reaction sound versus just like you know in a, yeah. in a film you know but exactly Benoni, that's that's exactly what i mean is because kai you said realistic and that was the thing that i was like i was latched on to of like is it realistic though or is it no, still like a yeah. hyper high standard of quality but i like i wouldn't necessarily say realism i mean the, the standard example is the the lion's roar that's not what lions sound like i have worked with both lions yeah. and tigers and that is a tiger roar um but lions sound stupid as hell yeah. <laughs> would, like what bald like, eagles bald eagles also sound dumb <laughs> oh yeah isn't it they use a red no what yeah it? it's a red-tailed hawk it? yeah mm -hmm. that's it yeah yeah, yeah. um yeah. But then I think awesome. when I said like realistic, I meant as in, so you're using it like quality. Yeah. Like, you know, what, the sound of a film is you're presenting a idea of reality as opposed to actual yes. reality. But then yes. but do, do, cause I, do diegetic podcasts do that? Or I like, do you see what I mean? Like so does the standard to, of that matter like, to the quality of the actual media? Actual realism yeah. is if somebody was, you know, if you do a diegetic fight scene, you have to, act as if you have stood in a fight scene outside a bar or whatever and recorded it and it has to sound like it would have which is usually a lot of footsteps and like <laughs> that kind of thing. you know what i mean i feel like also though it's it's because it is fiction you do get that plausible deniability of like yeah. okay mm. blair witch project top to bottom is found footage and everything yeah. that happens in it is diegetic their audio is really fucking good for sprinting through the woods. Yeah, with yeah. yeah exactly. Yeah, their, their guy with that boom mic, man, you gotta, you gotta yeah. fire him again. Like, and he's, so, he's really good. <laughs> and so I feel like there is just, like, a touch of yeah. leeway there in that, like, yes, it's gonna be different. It's gonna be slightly towards, like, the realism side, but it's not hyper-realistic. Nobody's listening. I, I mean, yeah. the quality of it I think it depends on the framing, right? Um, like and the genre because, and the genre, very much so the genre. Um, like for example, you're talking about Magnus Archives, very very early episodes. They just put the tape deck um, filter over the top of 
mediocre audio quality and nobody batted an eye at it because it was meant to be kind of like that. So I think if it's inconsistent with the story that's being presented, if like, for example, we have a hyper-realistic future sci-fi thing and then we hear it and it sounds like it's been put through a dishwasher, like that's a bit weird and we're going to have more difficulty yeah. buying into it. Whereas if it was a Western, be like, okay, sounds like yeah. it's gone through, you know, about eight shootouts. That seems viable. Like that sounds about right. Um, so, I'm, I'm dreading in Chain of Being when somebody makes a phone call. Because like, do I yeah. fuck it to the degree where it's like, this is what a phone call sounds like, but it's like, it's however many years in the future. Right. Audio quality and transmissions can be fucking perfect, but you're not going to, I don't want it to sound like they're in the room. So yeah, right. it's it's a, it's a choice you have to make eventually that I've not yet had to make. But when I do, I, I will spend weeks too. trying to figure it out. The, yeah. uh, one of the big things that drives me nuts with um, audio diegetic media, and I know this is probably only a me, a me thing, um, so do not apply the standard to anybody. I'm neurotic enough that this is a, a thing that I notice. Um, blocking. Um, I, mm. my, my original uh, artistic endeavor was musical theater. Blocking is my bread and butter. I know where everybody should be at any point in time. And so I track things and I think in like the 3D space a lot. And that's just kind of how my brain's always worked. So with Jack of all trades and with um, Midsummer's Quarantine, weirdly enough, which is also diegetic, actually, now that I think about it, um, and not horror. There we go. Now we have an example. It is definitively not horror. <laughs> um, but all of those are have blocking as to where the microphone is at any given point in time and relative to where the other characters are. Um, because I pay attention, me, I, Amy, pay attention, and I go, you were not on that side of the room two seconds mm -hmm. ago, and I did not hear any air motions that you were turning. I did not hear any effort. I heard nothing. We are still facing the same direction. That motherfucker either needs some footsteps or to stay put. And like, <laughs> so that's something that I follow very closely um, mm -hmm. to for immersive stuff, if I'm meant to be living through the microphone, so to speak, um, I, that paying attention to that is something that I can't really get away from. And I thought that was actually a wonderful thing about Chain of Being, too, in how, when it is immersive, that one guy hammering a nail in the background is exactly where he is the entire time. When Adam passes him by, you can hear it. <laughs> and like that, that is so cool to me, and it is immediately drags me into that like way beyond the point of suspension of belief i am now willing to follow whatever the hell you throw at me so with stuff like i think you can increase your quality in ways that have nothing to do with the actual audio quality is what i'm getting at um yeah. if your blocking is solid enough you could make it sound like you recorded it on a tape deck um but it's in mm. the sci-fi future so long as your blocking is believable enough people will be like i guess something happened to the files between now and then um, <laughs> must be my headphones my right. 21st century <laughs> headphones exactly yeah um oh there's that why it's a bit of a <laughs> why so many horror podcasts oh sorry sorry <laughs> I was going to say, there's your excuse for the telephone calls. Yeah. Ty is like, oh, it's your headphones, actually. Good evening, yeah. listeners. Your headphones you can't pick up the quality of... <laughs> yeah. Slightly known Dude, fuck you. I see your brains couldn't... So it's your oh. fault if you think about it? Wait, yeah. Everyone here can hear it perfectly fine. You're the odd one out. <laughs> you should feel <laughs> bad about it. Anyway, this That's episode is sponsored by Raycon. Yeah. <laughs> um, is, that, is that why so many horror podcasts have that... Or like even just like... Well, yeah, so many, so many of these podcasts have, like, it's almost like a meme at this point. I was, I was making the joke with my um, housemate that, like, you could, there should be, like, a shared universe of, like, horror podcasts where everyone just has tape decks. Like, they, they never <laughs> progress past tape decks, and that's why everyone uses them in everything. Like, I, is, is it use it because it's such an iconic thing? And if you do take liberties with, like, realism, whatever that means, yeah. once you put the tape deck thing, it's like, oh, this is a recording. And so then it kind of, like, is a very easy way to go, I oh, look, it's so. a recording, it's okay. Yeah. It's, 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 it's just things like analog. Forgiving. It's like analog horror, pretty much. Like yeah. where you can you can instantly make footage found so... by putting CCTV lines on it. You yeah, know, that is true. Which CCTV yeah. cameras now do not have those lines. No. They no. are government Hi, drones bud. looking in my window. Okay, yeah. <laughs> hey, bud. Um, but yeah, it's <laughs> the the tape deck also has. Um, this is this is a, a foley thing. And I'll mm -hmm. touch on briefly before we, we should wrap this this up. But um, we 
Foley artists and um, any sound designer, or music designer, anybody who's trying to create an atmosphere with sound. So again, touching on the musical theater history here, um, there's a vibe to sound. There's a reason why some things are pleasant, some things are not. Um, I am willing to bet that Kai knows way more about the the actual information about that than I do. But I know that at a baseline, some mm-hmm. stuff sounds nice, some stuff doesn't. Um, yeah. And typically, the more mechanical a sound is, the rougher it'll be because it's not designed to sound nice to you. It is, it is a sound that is a product of whatever is happening, um, not an indicator noise. So tape decks don't have um, indicator noises that have been designed. Those are all mechanics. So if you are hearing the click, you are literally hearing the, the gears of the tape hitting the mechanism that is stopping them from moving. Um, you are hear, hearing the magnets shift around in the little plastic box. Um, It is a very mechanical device, and as a result, there's nothing about it that has been designed to be pleasing. Whereas if, say, I recorded this on my, I don't even know if iPods had recording, and I don't think they did. Oh, trust me, they did. (laughs) And for cool, (laughs) you could control, I guess would be the way. (laughs) But um, (laughs) They did. Oh, yeah. Down to the the, uh, nano with a scroll. You yeah, I did because I did record stuff with my nano. Um, but like, it's still like a like, like <laughs> it doesn't sound like I'm running for my life here. I'm never going to see my children again. <laughs> like, it's gonna sound- you know what? I was just thinking actually, the kind of is the kind of the equivalent of that in in the and the, as you were describing the mechanical thing of like undesigned. But yeah, go like. On. When you like pick up a like w- when I'm recording with a Zoom, the fucking worst thing. Well, it's like a field recorder. The worst thing is like the ru- like movement sounds on the mic like you can hear your hands on the outside casing because the vibrations are going through into the diaphragm so there is no beep when it stops but you know i literally yeah, exactly like you know i've picked up the mic and press stop because right at the beginning in the end there's a and it always does the exact same thing and like yeah so i think that might be the modern equivalent so yeah but it's also tape sound cool it's iconic you know is yeah. sexy yeah, yeah. <laughs> We'll, we'll end there. Why tape recorders? They suck. <laughs> Sexy. Um, sorry, yeah. <laughs> it was, it was, as you were saying, like, oh yeah, mechanical noises, they're not meant to be like, or they're, they're not pleasant, they're rougher. And then inside I went, maybe there's something yeah, wrong with it. Like, I, I love to, mechanical noises. Yeah, call, call, the, call the conversation back to why does Bucky Barnes have 45 straps? Because mechanical noise is sexy. Yeah, 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 exactly. Exactly. <laughs> that was the whole reason for the arm, too. Get really. that arm moved. Just, <laughs> yeah. Whoa, the articulation joke. I wanted to talk to the pro, the prop maker there and ooh, have some interesting conversation. Anyway, hey, same. <laughs> anyway, mechanical shit hits different as we're going to land on that. Literally. <laughs> I play the sounds of fucking machinery to go to bed. Motors and I, fucking gyros. I, I used to are. listen to a... Fox. There's our there's our third track for our analog fucks. <laughs> I used to listen to a, a, a Soviet submarine ambiance to fall asleep Shit. because it was just enough like empty dead sound with like bing, bing <laughs> like activate my like it was great it was fabulous. Yes. I'm better right. now. <laughs> Doubt. Um, we're gonna have our dinner break and we'll be back at uh, 7 p.m. Eastern. Um, 5 p.m. Mountain if you're in my range <laughs> and uh, 4 p.m. Uh, Pacific uh, we'll be back to talk about the future of scripted audio drama alright guys see ya oh yeah it's starting at 12 a.m. <laughs> <laughs> Now, you seem to me to be a connoisseur of the best of radio drama. In which case, make sure you're subscribed to the Monday Matinee Feed. There we have our weekly series of dramatic, theatrical, classic, eclectic, and live radio drama. So, yeah, either the main mutual audio network feed for all types and genres of audio drama, or the Monday Matinee. And we'll see you there. The Mutual Audio Network. Listening and imagining together.